Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm at Apex 2018. I'm joined by three gentlemen to discuss the topic of actionable data for quality improvement. We have Michael here from Aegis, we have Cameron here from Sheeran Consulting, and we have Dr. Bill Cardoso from Creative Electron. Guys, thanks for joining me. Talked a huge amount about data collection this week, and it's certainly been a topic at this show. But if you can't do anything with it, there's no point in having it. Um, Perhaps I can start with you, Cameron, as the as the consultant of the group. What are people expecting from this data? Data lakes, data piling up isn't enough, is it? So the idea is a measure of variability, and that causes uh, quality, reliability problems, and also product safety issues. Counterfeit can be a, um, a major driver in that. Talk to me a little bit about how you're detecting um, counterfeiting and... Yeah, so X-ray is one of the many technologies used uh, in the detection of counterfeit components. Um, X-ray is uh, especially uh, important when you're looking for the homogeneity of the lot, right? Make sure all the parts are the same, they haven't been remarked. Uh, both uh, Mike and I are in the uh, SMT uh, technical media, uh, SMTA technical media for the counterfeit conference, uh, which is a... Uh, important yearly gathering uh, where we look at the latest and greatest technologies in uh, counterfeit detection. Okay, yeah. okay. And Michael, it's not just about counterfeiting. There are other things you can do with data that, that impact massively on quality. Uh, really, yes. I mean, you know, rather than thinking of the kind of scenarios we'd all like to avoid, like recalls and counterfeit, um, we've got a, an exceptional quality tool. Because if you are making, for example, 10,000 products, and yet you have just one defect, why did that happen? How can you go back and find out the root cause, <clears throat> you know, the unique combination of things that occurred to make that defect happen? So that's step one. Okay, can we identify forensically that kind of evidence? Then, how do we find out whether other products that we made, even though they didn't fail, could be weaker than others? And so can we be sure that we can pass that lot um, you know, for delivery? and that is then a judgment based on the data. Then we go to the step three, which is now that we have this digital evidence of why it was caused and we understand what happened, we need to put a corrective action in place, a kappa fracas kind of procedure, which is then digitally attached to that data that's been gotten. So then we can make absolutely sure that that will never happen again. So it's a three step process, which is all enabled through pure traceability. And when you look at that from your point of view, Bill, obviously part of that is the detection, part of that is the scanning, but again, that's just giving us the data. How do you feed that back to different areas? Is it, is it through MES software or is it through local cyber yeah, so, physical systems? Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we were just uh, discussing this earlier that um, data out of context is noise. Right? You have to contextualize data to make it into information. Information you can then feed back into your process for quality improvement. Right? So uh, one example uh, I'd like to use, uh, we have uh, statistical process control uh, instruments or tools uh, inside our uh, X-ray uh, inspection product. So uh, one of the things one of our customers was able to observe is that uh, voiding on Monday morning uh, was well under control under the parameters uh, that they were specified for failure. And by Friday evening, uh, they were completely off, right? So that's something that as you plot uh, um, void as a function of time, you're able to see the trend. And they were able to then use that information, again, contextualize it, and find out that the solder paste was not being stored properly throughout the week. They would open a new bucket on Monday morning and leave it out. So as the week progressed, their assemblies got worse and worse and worse. So uh, contextualizing data is mm. critical. And th yeah. that's one of the steps that you were describing, right? That's a critical step so you can f close the loop, the feedback yeah. loop, and improve your process. Yeah, and use that data to, to do something that's quite a straightforward and simple fix. Cameron, when you're engaged with clients, what kind of what kind of problems are they asking you to solve or are they asking you to kind of bring together the whole data? So it's twofold. One is in the factory, um, but it's but they're also thinking in terms of a broader, more comprehensive total lifetime. Yeah. So they're using that data to drive the design and then also to drive the maintenance within the factory and then also to pick the machines in the factories where they don't have to buy new pieces of equipment yeah. that actually will allow them to push the design. And then moreover, since they have connected devices, they can take the information from the field of actual usage, drive that back into the design to make real innovation there. So it becomes broader and broader, right? And so you actually can 
make products that are actually more useful as well as more uh, robust in the manufacturing environment. Yeah, and that's really interesting, Cameron. We, we get a bit bogged down with pushing data around in the factory, but you're right, it's that whole cradle to grave. It's from the design, it's out there in the field, it's throughout the supply chain. You've got big data uh, tools like Hadoop, for example, you know, and then you've got connected devices, and then you have the traceability. Then you're able to do a, a multi-factor um, you know, experiment to actually figure out what are the what are the strong correlations, what are the weak correlations, and how do you drive those to make better products? And instead of having to do a manual process like Toyota did with their pickup truck to go figure out what failed, you can actually automate that and have drive that back in uh, to, to get better time to market. Yeah, and that's going to reduce costs like recall, and which is you know massively expensive. Michael, from a point of view of um, software solutions, you obviously have, you're operating within the factory confines, but you've also got connectivity and, mm -hmm. and influence outside. That's an important factor in terms of in improving quality. Oh, yeah, really. Um, I mean, first of all, there is a relationship between the kind of defect levels found within a factory and those found out in the market. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you always know pretty much what's going to happen. The defects that get out into the market are much more important to really deal with. And when you have kind of uh, the feedback directly into manufacturing, for example, the faulty uh, products are returned as an RMA process, for example, then you can really get to learn what is the practical kind of reason for failure within the market. And then you need to divide that into kind of, was it a materials issue? Was it a production issue? Was it even a design issue? Because you then really need to kind of you know, tear it down and find out that root cause. Yeah, and I was going to say, Bill, how often do you look at something on a X-ray image and you can see what the fold is and you just think, why did they design it that way? And you can you can then close that feedback loop. I'll take the fifth on that one. Again. I'll take the fifth on that one. Yeah, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. Difficult to criticize. Yeah, and, and that's one of the critical things, uh, um, you know, design for manufacturability has been discussed you know ad nauseum in, in different forums uh, design for inspectability is something that we preach to our customers quite a bit right uh, for example uh, overlaying components right on top of components right leads to uh, casting x-rays right on top of each other so if you can just space them by you know a fraction of an inch you have a much better uh, inspection capability so there's a lot of things that uh, uh, can be used uh, to feed back the design process yeah. and Cameron when you look at all that data that's flowing not just within the factory but up and down the supply chain through the designers through the fulfillment organizations through the reverse logistics all those all those different areas do you see an improvement there in communication and is there a, a way of building better design rules that are informed by these processes. Absolutely. In other words, it's, it's, it makes the whole supply chain and also the whole design cycle and product lifetime much more robust because you have that common foundation to build off of and you have that common language that everybody can speak. And then moreover, you can also see how people are using the uh, products in the, in the field and then use that to figure out, okay, do I have a hanging chad type scenario where it looks okay, it passes all this, the, everything, but it, it's, uh, it's not sufficient to meet the needs in the marketplace. Yeah. So having that, that, that feedback all the way from the field back really uh, helps improve the brand because you're in effect yeah. allowing people to, to have trust in that because they just buy something that just works for what they're doing. Yeah, so you've got an improvement in brand experience, but you're also meeting that demand to compress the idea to consumer a uh, cycle which everybody's in a desperate you know, rush to do at the moment. And you look at you know social media type things and they want to talk about what they're doing and so forth. So there are a lot of customers that would really be advocates, you know, if, as long as it's not too personal, right? Yeah. Um, but is, they would be very happy to convey that information back to make a better product, yeah. especially if they like the brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the that's the consumer becoming the brand ambassador. Gentlemen, thanks for stopping by to chat. Really interesting topic, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.